That lunch counter has been called the most famous lunch counter in American history. Is that fair? Oh, I think it's absolutely fair. There is no doubt in my mind that this is one of the most important moments in 20th century America. It is the lunch counter that really sparked a revolution. The Greensboro lunch counter is a wonderful example of something that on the surface seems innocuous. And yet, by the way people reacted to it, by the way people used it as a tool to change America, it's one of the most important moments in the 20th century. So for people who don't know, tell me the story of that lunch counter. So it is 1960, and we have, we're only five years, six years away from the Brown versus Board of Education, five years from the Montgomery bus boycott. So the civil rights movement is on everybody's mind. But they're still struggling to figure out what are the strategies to confront Jim Crow segregation. In February 1960, four students from North Carolina A&T said, you know, one of the ways to do it is to demand desegregation by sitting in at the Greensboro lunch counter. And these lunch counters, like hotels and buses, were segregated. And so the notion was that if these students could sit down, um, they weren't sure what was going to happen. Um, but they thought they would at least strike a blow for social justice. So tell me the progression here. That day, the four of them, what happened the next day and the next day and the next day? What happens is that the four sit in, um, and in essence they're ignored initially. And they come back with different iterations, and it suddenly becomes a movement that people from other parts of the college begin to say, all right, we will now sit in. And what happens is that gets picked up by the media and it's seen as one of the strategies. Remember, this is 1960, so you're just now on the cusp of the Freedom Riders, people riding buses to fight for, for desegregation, and suddenly people saw attacking lunch counters. Woolworths and others as really a, an effective tool. And so what this does, it launches hundreds, hundreds of sit-ins around the country, especially throughout the South, using this as a tool to get media attention, to demand that change occurs. And so this lunch counter, this simple lunch counter, really was the spark that launched the revolution. Woolworths were different in different parts of the country. So in much or even most of the country, Woolworths lunch counters were, were desegregated. What Woolworths said is that they would follow the local custom. So that if you were in places like Newark, New Jersey, or um, that the custom was people could sit at the counter. If you were in Alabama, Mississippi, North Carolina, the custom was Jim Crow segregation. So what Woolworths said is that we're not gonna have a policy. We're gonna follow the local custom. And it wasn't long after their sit-in that this lunch counter actually was desegregated. This lunch counter in Woolworths was desegregated in July of that year. So it was also a victory. So people could see this as something really important. But can I tell you why this is important to me in a personal way? Yeah. When I was a kid growing up in New Jersey, I thought the key thing in life, being a five-year-old, six-year-old, was running to Woolworths with my mom, right? And going to sit at the lunch counter and having a hamburger. I thought that was the greatest thing ever. So it's got to be 1957, 1958. I'm taken to North Carolina to visit relatives. Now, not Greensboro, but Raleigh. And I'm in Raleigh, and my aunt and another relative are walking behind me, and I see Woolworths. So I run in and sit at the lunch counter. And I'm sitting at this lunch counter, and suddenly these white hands pick me up and take me over to the standing part where only colored people could stand. And I remember being dumbfounded. My aunt was terrified. And I remember being dumbfounded. And they served me a hamburger. And the taste was never the same. I never went back to Woolworths after that. But I'll never forget how much that hurt, just as a little kid from New Jersey. So then when years later, I have an opportunity to sort of think about collecting, collecting this lunch counter, it became both a professional issue and a very personal issue.